they come. And please welcome Eric Nix and Ken Parks. All right, we have marketing folks at the microphones here. Just step up if you have a question. If you don't have a question, I guess this will be the shortest. It'll be no Q or A. If you don't have a Q, we don't have A, so. All right, we have the brains behind Scary Farm right here. If you have a question, step right up to the I microphone. Right over here. Uh, is there any plan to bring back the decorations on the Calico Mine Train? Uh, one of the things that we're, we wanted to do with this season is uh, lean back into uh, Scary Farm's past, but also uh, look at what we could do new. So what we're really leaning into is that the entire park is the attraction. It's not just a theme park that has haunted attractions. Uh, and so we have no plans uh, this year to do that. However, uh, I wouldn't rule out the future. And uh, the skeleton key rooms, are those... Uh, a one year setback, or are they going to be coming back, or are they out? Uh, well, with each year, we want to look at, at uh, uh, what we can do that would be new and innovative. We had uh, quite, a, quite a good run with the skeleton team rooms, and so this year we thought we would take a, a break from those and uh, give ourselves a chance to sort of recharge and think about uh, new and uh, interesting ways that we could scare you in that intimate setting, and also to lean a little more into what future technology might bring. So, great. Thank thanks. You. Thank you. Your question over here. What about having a maze that was just all females? <laughs> we're doing that. We're just not telling you we're doing it. Yeah. And, and I think also they just have a maze about Jeff. The Tucker Benjamin. What maze about Jeff Tucker? Yeah, that'd be scary right there. No, yeah. the problem is the maze would be too short. Yeah, it would be very short. <laughs> hey, this maze is great. I'm already out. <laughs> it's Q and A and roast. That's <laughs> your. Sure. Any, any real questions? <laughs> just, just to follow up, will there be a maze with only males? <laughs> We're doing that. We're just not telling you. <laughs> okay. Lean-in strategy. I like. Yes, over there. I love the idea that you have mazes themed to the scare zones. What in development? What? How did you guys pick, like spitball that idea? Well, I think it ties back to we um, we want the we want the entire park to become the attraction. And I think this year when we were throwing out ideas, um, and we had a venue open over in the hollow, it made sense when Daniel pitched the pumpkin in a maze, and when I came up with Dark Ride, we're like, we have to do that, and Boardwalk to tie it in. So I think it was just a combination of the pieces coming together nicely this year. Excellent. And we're actually going to integrate, there's going to be some characters that are in the maze that are out actually in the zone, and vice versa. All right, over here, yes. Hey there. Um, you mentioned technology a little earlier uh, in regards to that. At what point does the other, is there a line where there's too much technology sometimes? Do you, did you design something with a lot of tech and say, oh, this is, this is going to take away from the scares or can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, I think the important thing is anytime we're uh, investigating any new technology, it's not about uh, a showcase of technology. It's just, uh, technology is just another tool, just like a talent or, you know, paint or a prop. It's how do we tell the story and how do we best convey the message and that feeling of fear. Uh, so we, we're, we don't ever do technology just to do technology. We do technology if it enhances and helps us tell the story. So I, I think that's something we're very conscious of, not overdoing technology. But when you are on the uh, flip side of that, when you're tasked with, or you see this wonderful new technology, it's just, how do we build a scare around that? So uh, we don't do tech for tech's sake. If the tech inspires us or brings something out, then definitely we, we pursue it aggressively, like this guy's done for years. So there won't be any emoji the maze, <laughs> thankfully. Over there, yeah. Yeah, what are the challenges of putting an overlay into the existing attraction of the log ride? 
Uh, there's lots of challenges to that. Um, I think the main thing that we try to be conscious of is not taking away from the actual ride itself, not damaging uh, the amazing rides that are so historic in this park, uh, but trying to come up with concepts that uh, lend themselves to the existing ride, and that's why we thought the, the Timber Mountain um, Halloween Hoot Handy was perfect because it's already based around this town getting together for a Hoot Handy, so let's throw our Halloween spin on it. <laughs> What's that? Just a star every day. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a slider, by which I mean a tiny hammer. Yes, who's next? Alright, so um, what are some things that you look for um, when casting people in the mazes and in the ghost towns and carnival and stuff, aside from just being scary? And if it is just scary, what is your definition of just scary? I think when we're doing our casting and um, the auditions, we're just looking for people that are willing to put themselves out there and not being afraid to look silly. Because if you strip away the mask, the makeup, what we're doing essentially is very silly. So we, that's what we're just looking for, people that are just willing to go that extra mile. Yeah, definitely. Um, if people have acting experience or if they have performing experience in any way, that's a plus. But it's not the answer. It's not. Um, I've done various kinds of performing in my life and, and nothing is really like being a monster. So it, it really takes uh, an openness to just letting yourself go and immersing yourself in that character. Uh, and you know, we look for people who obviously fit the type that we're, you know, the body type and all that stuff, but people who are open and willing to just let go of who they are to be what they can become and um, just let it all out there. Hi there, Joe Garcia with Latino USA, and first of all, I want to congratulate you guys. Every year, you guys hit it out of the ballpark. There's a lot of com competitors who try to go far beyond. They have, obviously, bigger property to use, but nobody compares to Not Scary Farm, and I just want to congratulate you guys on uh, well work done, and also giving props for the first time to see a little behind the scenes of how these Mazer are put together, the hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears, and bringing the, the crew here that you guys brought tonight. I thought that was... Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Laurie Clemisola with Coaster Chit Chat. And I was wondering, um, you talk about wanting to go back to some of the historic things that you guys have had here at Scary Farm. The trapped experience, I only got to do that once, and it was one of the most amazing things I've ever done at a Halloween event. I was wondering if there's anything that's going to be that interactive and hands on maybe in the future. I guess everybody's looking at me because I uh, actually did one of those. Um, the Traps is a, was a wonderful experience. Uh, I would never rule out going back to that world. Um, but uh, the reality of it is, at this point, there's so many different escape rooms and things like that that are um, kind of doing what we did uh, that it's tough to find new stories. Well, it's not tough to find new stories. Uh, take that back. But it's, it's, um, there are limitations to what we can do in a theme park environment. So we are moving towards things that are more open to everybody. I love doing Trapped and if the right story is there, I'm sure we pursue it. But um, at the moment we're, we're looking at how do we entertain all of the guests instead of the select few and uh, how do we keep everything, uh, especially with getting, taking the skeleton keys out. What we've done is we've made it so it's not just a, this elite few that can do it, it's open to all guests. And that was one of the challenges with Trap too, that um, we do create these wonderful experiences that such a small number of our guests can do. So what we've done is we've taken the lessons we've learned from Trap and we've applied them to other venues. Um, will we go back there someday? Anything's possible. But uh, right now we're really looking forward to, or looking to entertain everybody that comes to the door the same. Thank you. I'd like to tag onto that quickly and just say to, uh, what Gus was saying is that we, we took those experiences and learned so much from uh, those experiences, the trapped experiences, and also the skeleton key experience. And I think you'll find this year that you'll have some of those same uh, types of experiences in what we're offering. So, uh, especially with the trick or treat, lights out. Uh, to me, it's a it's a far scarier experience than the trapped experience. But I had the same uh, uncomfortable feeling going through it. And then I think Red Barn, uh, we looked at taking Red Barn and what could we do to make that feel like a horror film so that you do feel trapped. So there are segments in the maze that you will actually be trapped for a brief moment while this serial killer, this recurring serial killer, is chasing you through the maze. 
Yeah, they were uh, mentioning that there was no uh, a dance party at the Fiesta Village this time. Is there going to be like a soundtrack or anything for the area to have any like overlying theme music or anything? And, and was there any really for the Hollows, or was that kind of a quiet zone? Uh, so Fiesta just becomes a traditional scare zone. Uh, of course, it has a soundtrack and a new lighting package and all that. To, make up for the missing dance party, and then with the hollows, we're actually putting quite a bit of energy into that zone, uh, theming it, so I think you're going to see uh, a lot more decor coming to the scare zones. Hey John, Ken with Horror Buzz. Uh, Shadowlands was one of the great maze additions last year, and it was one of those mazes that the scares got better as the season went on. Uh, I'm hearing that you've redesigned the end, which I thought was brilliant because there was so much going on in it that you didn't know where the scares were actually coming from. Can you give us a little preview of what you're planning to do with the end? Well, the scare overload at the end is still there, so don't worry about that. Uh, now, what, what we're referring to is the interior of the maze where we have that, uh, I don't think it's any way, but that giant puppet. We definitely just open that up so that thing can do a lot more damage. Oh, wait, cool. Thank you. <laughs> in, uh, in special ops, is there any plan to have a kill count or a ranking system as you go through? Uh, your laser tag gun, it actually does contract. So as you're exiting, make sure to take a glance at that screen. It'll let you know how many um, how many zombies you've taken out, how many times you've been bitten, all that stuff. So the guns are actually keeping track of your score. As far as a ranking system, it's more just friendly competition with your group. Sounds good. Joseph with the Orange County Register. Um, I know there was a bit of controversy last year with the B, you know, the fear VR. Um, but despite all the controversy, it was still a very popular attraction. Are there plans to introduce something similar to that this year? Um, we, well, uh, fear VR. That was that was a, a pretty unfortunate thing because, uh, unfortunately, what happened with that? Yes, it was a great experience and. Um, Unfortunately, the name of it was not indicative of what the content was, so um, people really weren't able to judge it based on what it was, and we unfortunately picked a name that sounded cool that didn't really work out for uh, people who had had unfortunate experiences there. So, Fear VR was, uh, it was unfortunate that we were uh, taking people and putting them and making them upset with our product. Uh, are we going to do that this year? We are not doing a Fear VR this year. However, we did learn a lot of lessons from that. It was a good experience, and it's something that's always on the table for the future, much like Trapped or any other experience. Um, the, for the past several years, Not Scare Farm continues to seem to be innovative in creating things like Trap before um, escape rooms became popular. You had augmented reality, you know, Skeleton Cube from last year and other uh, related experiences. What are some of the ways you, year after year, can try to make Not Scare Farm a personalized experience for guests versus just other theme parks that have generic um, Halloween mazes? I guess I'll start this one. <laughs> Tag on. Uh, and so I think that's one thing that, that we are not afraid to do is step outside of the box and continue to try and innovate and uh, experiment with new technologies. Last year, the key room for Prey is what inspired the new trick-or-treat maze and gave, gave us the vantage point to be able to look at that and say, okay, how can we make this different? Even though it's a familiar maze, it's going to be an all-new experience just based on this technology alone. Um, yeah, I think the experience that, you know, like I've learned from dealing with Trapped and uh, other key rooms and things like that is it's really when you can break it down to personal moments, and it's something that I've tried to do with... Um, the Red Barn this year is just to get a little bit more intimacy and a little bit more urgency in the scare. Um, because there is um, there is some charm to the startle scares and you know they're the bread and butter of haunted mazes, but, but yeah, I love it when we can really break it down to story and we can connect with guests as many as possible in a one-on-one -on -one thing. Because when you break through their safety barrier and you get that intimate connection, that's when you can really get them, and, and we're really just here to make people as scared and miserable as possible. I would also add to that that we actually like the fact that we are not um, uh, heavily reliant upon IP. 
Uh, it forces us to um, innovate and be creative and think of new and interesting ways to entertain and to scare. The other thing is we have, uh, as you saw tonight, uh, a large group of folks that uh, help us put all of this together. And we have uh, people behind the scenes in our design team, myself included, Eric, uh, who is our producer, who all started as haunt fans. And so we, we have a love of the event, and I think that informs almost everything that we do. We really, we love it, and we know uh, how the fans feel about it. So we never want to disappoint, not only ourselves, but we definitely never want to disappoint the fans. So speaking as someone who's, I've done a lot of uh, clown work myself, I've worked different mazes, um, I've got multiple costumes at home. Um, I've learned real quickly that jump scares can make yourself incredibly tired, you can lose your voice within a night. Shaker cans are great, but I love the psychology of chlorophobia and the fear of clowns. Most people in this room are probably not afraid of a lot of things, but I can bet that you're probably afraid of clowns. With Carnival and the Dark Ride, can we look for some sort of psychological scare instead of just jump scares? Is there a balance to that, or...? Well, I think where you will really see it is trick-or-treat. It's psychologically frightening. Okay. And so I think it's something new for us, and I think it's going to change the way that our talent scares in that attraction. Uh, the jump scare in that attraction is not is no longer effective in that type of environment. It's really a, a situation where we are uh, letting you uh, psychologically get uh, uh, frightened by the potential of what's ahead of you and the fact that you are having difficulty seeing what is coming. And so it requires that the, the monsters at that point lay back and wait for the perfect moment. Uh, and once again, as John has mentioned, uh, as we have uh, presented the trick or treat uh, to all of you, we have control of those lights. So we turn them off and that adds to a startling new scare. So you have a, now a crew that is waiting for those lights to go out so they can get even closer to you because they know that it's coming back on and you're going to come face to face with them. Um, so that's one I, I, I'm super excited by that. I think it's just going to change everything we do. Um, yes, Spencer from Attraction Spot. I'm just wondering how you guys compare to Halloween Horror Nights or Fright Fest. What sets you guys apart for your mazes? Well, I mean, we just are always pushing ourselves. It's, it's not about what does the competition do. It's like, what can we do to be better and how do we better ourselves? And um, as Ken said before, IPs are great, but we're not bound by IPs. We're the sky's the limit, you know. Uh, whatever horrible, hideous thing we come up with when we're driving our kids to school, that's what we're going to do to people. Uh, so it's it's really just that's not, I'm, sounds silly, but you know, uh, sometimes you have violent thoughts. But uh, no, we're not bound by those things. Um, you you know, uh, you're not. We're not. We are encouraged by our great leadership here to be as nuts and as awful as possible and still be able to turn that into something and create for everybody. Um, so I think, if anything, we're unleashed. Yes, thank you. And we don't have those IPs to go off of, so we're, we're really forced to see what can we do to set ourselves apart. And a lot of times, uh, that's where technology or innovation kicks in. Uh, and then, just personally, as a, as a fan of haunted attractions in, in general, what I really love is when I come to Not Scary Farm, it, it really genuinely feels like Halloween is here. And I think that's something that this park can offer over other events. Yeah, we, we feel that we are, our park is the attraction. And it's not just a, a theme park with uh, haunted attractions, but the park is the attraction. And it, uh, and I think you'll see uh, this year we're leaning into that even more. We have, uh, have built Easter eggs into uh, our lineup that uh, are out there. We're not promising them. We're hoping that you'll discover them. Uh, we mentioned a few of those kind of things that are happening. But we have all these wonderful assets that are here. And uh, so we've challenged the team to start tapping into those things uh, that are here. Um, so we're, we're super excited for you to see what that's like this year for us. All right, is that it? I think that's it, everybody. Let's hear it for John Cook, Daniel Miller, Wes Bruno, Jim Parks, and Alan Hicks.
That's Scott Brown for you, team, right there.